In my last video, I had done a comparison between the new Bryman and three different flukes. One of the flukes I was using to compare against the Bryman was this 87V. One of the tests I had performed was putting a pulse into the meters and I was demonstrating how this Bryman could pick up a uh, very short pulse. One of the viewers of that video pointed out that this 87V actually had a peak hold feature. After I downloaded the manual, it appears the 87V should actually outperform this Bryman. Now that I know how it works, I thought I'd put another video together showing how that function works. So on the scope right now, this is a 2.5 millisecond wide pulse. Shouldn't be any problem for these meters. This is a EX540. So I thought I'd demonstrate this along with the other two meters, because it does have a peak hold function as well. We'll just start with the X-Tech. The pulse is coming out of my ARB. This is a 50 uh, hertz waveform, and it's got a 2 volt peak. So I don't know if you can see this. This meter actually has tri-display. So up in the upper left here, this is the max, and the minimum, and the RMS value. So you can see it's reading uh, 2.005 and basically 0 volts. So that is the correct number. Before when I ran the fluke, again I didn't realize I had that function so I had just done a min-max and of course it can't pick it. However, we do this peak hold and sure enough you can see 1.992 and again zero volts so at least at uh, two and a half milliseconds this meter has no problem picking that up uh, again that was a mistake on my part not reading the manual for the meter before I did the test and the Bryman of course you can see a maximum of 1.997 same thing roughly zero volts Let's go ahead and decrease the pulse width here a little bit. So this is a one millisecond pulse width here. <clears throat> Again, the X text probably a little difficult to read, but uh, this is a reading again, 2.0 volts, 1.992 for the fluke, and 1.992 for the Bryman. So all meters is very close. So we'll go ahead and shorten the pulse width down a little further. So this is currently a 400 microsecond pulse width. So here again we can see the X-Tech 2.005 the Fluke 1.986 and the Bryman is now 1.527 we'll go ahead and decrease the pulse width further it's now a 200 microsecond pulse width in the x tech we can see is 2.004 the Fluke 1.992 and the Bryman 0 0.907 so this is with a 50 microsecond pulse the X-Tech is now 1.940 the Fluke 1.857 and the Bryman now 0.281 Okay, this is now a 10 microsecond wide pulse. So at 10 microsecond wide, the x tech is now reading 0.875, the Fluke 0.846, and the Bryman now 0.081. So if you needed to measure a pulse this narrow, uh, yeah, these three aren't going to do it for you. <laughs> but it does appear these two meters here, the Fluke and the X-Tech, are pretty comparable. Uh, again, you know, I use an oscilloscope if I was going to measure anything this uh, quick. To me, it's just interesting to see the meters, how far they progressed. 
as long as we have the meters out let's run a few more tests with them one of the things that's been brought up recently is the continuity test and the open circuit output voltage is a concern I guess for a few people so I thought we'd go ahead and measure it on all three of these so we'll use the little fluke 101 you can see the open circuit on the Bryman is 2.931 volts open circuit for the Fluke 87V is 7.34 volts and open circuit for the XTEC is 1.220 volts so if we're looking at the current unfortunately the little Fluke 101 doesn't have current so we'll use the uh, amp probe, I know this is in Cal I actually went through and aligned this thing after I repaired it and it's uh, actually pretty accurate anyway so uh, for the for the continuity test, the XTEC puts out about 490 microamps. The Fluke puts out about 1.22 milliamps. And the Bryman about 430 microamps. So another test I thought we could run. This is an isolation transformer that I use with my signal generators. And we're just putting out an AC waveform here. This actually has a rectifier built into it and the tap on this also has the diodes built into it if I'm using it in rectified or sampling mode here the RMS voltage is the same coming off of this box so as we can see here with a sine wave feeding out this is roughly a 50 volt signal or about 17.6 volt RMS and you can see all four of these meters are reading roughly 17.6 volts again the Fluke 101 is not an RMS meter but uh, it does display the data in RMS and the reason I want to show this here is we're going to try putting in some complex waveforms into these meters and we'll see how well they do with our RMS conversion so if we enable the rectification again this is a full wave rectifier it goes from 17.6 to 7.77 and that's the AC component of this waveform but that's not the RMS value so again here we can see the XTEC reads the correct number 17.6 17.6 on the amp probe and again the two flukes could do this you measure the AC followed by the DC component square these two numbers take the square root of that again and you'll come up with this same number well, what happens if we try to measure something a little more complex than this? The oscilloscope and the meters are all tied together in parallel and these are connected up to an ARB. And the ARB is connected to the PC through LabVIEW and we're going to try programming in some different complex waveforms. So nothing as simple as a sine wave. So the reason I brought out the 101 because it is an averaging type meter it isn't going to be capable of calculating the true RMS number I'm not going to do anything uh, with DC offsets because the fluke can't handle uh, AC plus DC so we'll keep the DC bias out of the waveforms and let's just see how close these meters match all these waveforms I'll just keep the fundamental frequency at 60 Hertz so the DSO currently is reading uh, 1.4 volts and you can see all the meters are roughly reading 1.4 volts as well so I don't know if you can tell, but this is a slightly clipped sine wave here. But basically all the same. A little slightly more clipped. You can see again all the meters reading roughly the same value. The little Fluke 101 is slightly higher. Again, now the X Tech is again slightly higher. Fluke is way off now. This will be a 50% chop. You can see like 0 0.908 versus a 0.86. So again, the little Fluke 101 is uh, substantially higher now. be a sine wave 
with 12% sixth order harmonic. This is roughly a 30% modulation, again at the sixth harmonic. So we can see it's a sine wave. Again, it's the sixth harmonic, but it's but it's now being modulated with a square wave instead of a sine wave. This is now the twelfth order harmonic. It's now being represented with a triangle wave. Here we can see a step sine wave. So here we have a slight bit of ringing, it starts at the zero cross, rings out through most of the cycle and then begins again at the next zero cross. As you can see the Fluke 101 has quite a bit of problems with this waveform, it's reading 0.3 volts roughly. See the small Fluke 101 is reading 1.6. This is with a chirp. X-Tech reads a little low. Ram and the Fluke still read about the same. Anyway, you get the idea. These meters basically all read the same that have the RMS, uh, the little Fluke 101, definitely the oddball. The x -Tech seems to be a little off compared to the Fluke and the Bryman, but uh, not enough that would ever concern me in its use. Uh, they all do pretty good with this.